Hi everyone, it's James here. Welcome to another video and this is going to be a response video to uh, David Newton uh, who uh, is a new channel to me. Um, I discovered him the other day. He does vinyl videos uh, but he's also a horror fan. He's got lots of horror, uh, horror movie type uh, videos up on his channel but he did do uh, a video a music based video and I've seen a couple of responses to this and the theme is great opening tracks to albums so I thought I would kind of jump on this. A set of 10 here for you, I'll um, whiz through them, hopefully it won't take too long over it, these are just some personal favourites. Okay, so the first one is uh, Salisbury Hill from the first solo album by Peter Gabriel, one of my uh, most treasured songs of all time. It's the song he wrote um, after he just left Genesis and it was meant to be a bit of a parable really, it's a kind of story of a young boy who's trying to make some kind of fresh start in life. It's a very spiritual song and uh, it was really written about Peter's um, escape really, I think. I think at the time he, you know, I think Peter saw himself as being embroiled in the uh, machinations of the music industry and uh, that song was meant to be a bit of a you know, a spiritual uh, salve for him really, just that idea of escape. It's just got this great kind of blue sky, open-ended kind of feel to it, wonderful melody, great, great lyrics, and uh, just one of my all-time favourite songs. So there we go, Salisbury Hill by Peter Gabriel. Uh, next one is a fantastic song from the Steely Dan album, um, Pretzel Logic. The first song on this record is called Ricky Don't Lose That Number. Uh, which pays homage to uh, Horace Silver, very kind of blue note jazz kind of feel to it, great opening bass riff. It's just got a very cool classic Steely Dan late night jazz funk pop ambience, um, just absolutely brilliant. There they are, Steely Dan, Ricky Don't Lose That Number, fantastic stuff. Right, next one, um, okay, so this is a bit of a a departure from the previous one. This is uh, Yes and the song Owner of a Lonely Heart which comes from their album uh, 90125 which was sort of a, a big comeback album for them. Uh, came out in 1983 and it was produced by Trevor Horn and uh, it had a very kind of almost a sort of pop disco uh, Hard to describe it really, not not really new wave even, it was just very, very Trevor Horn, you know, uh, samples, uh, Fairlight synths, drum machines, just all kinds of whiz-bang, jiggery-pokery going on. It was kind of, yes, totally reimagined for the 1980s. Brilliant pop hook. I think the song was written by Trevor Rabin, sung by John Anderson, and it's just one of the great all-time um, tracks from the 1980s. Brilliant way to start a record. I must confess the album does slightly struggle to uh, catch up with it really. It's just one of those great opening songs after which the rest of the album feels a little bit um, traditional I suppose. Uh, but yeah, just an absolutely fantastic song uh, courtesy of Yes and Trevor Horn, Owner of a Lonely Heart. Okay, next one, bit of a kind of um, deep, deep catalogue one, I suppose, but I've always loved this song and loved this album. This is John Cale and Slow Dazzle, which came out uh, on Island Records in maybe 1974, was it? And um, it's just, okay, so the song is called Mr. Wilson, and uh, it, was John, it was John Cale's tribute to Brian Wilson. Uh, the song does have a bit of a Beach Boys feel to it in places. He manages to recreate... Uh, you know, the great uh, Beach Boys harmonies. and uh, But it's just a very, very evocative song. If you haven't heard it, check it out. It's got this amazing sort of dreamy section in the middle where it goes into this almost a kind of um, fairground sort of ambience. It's very melancholy, very nostalgic sounding, and um, I've, I've, I've just always loved it. The first two songs on this album I absolutely love, Mr. Wilson and then the following song, Taking It All Away, just come as a great double whammy, um, just a great just a great pair of songs and um, it, you know it's it's great to hear somebody like John Cale uh, paying tribute just to somebody like Brian Wilson because the, you know the two of them don't seem to have that much in common uh, but John Cale was a big fan of Brian and the Beach Boys so that makes that interesting, great song. Okay so I'm jumping about all over the place here, no attempt at chronology whatsoever. This is a record that I keep seeing on the vinyl community, I know Rob Walker showed it quite recently but I'm, but I'm just going to go with it because I, I just love this song. Uh, the song is Farron Young 
and uh, it's the opening song on the Prefab Sprout album, Steve McQueen, uh, which sort of was their breakthrough album. I think it was the first one produced by Thomas Dolby. I could be wrong, maybe he produced the previous one to this. Um, it's just the most, it's just got the most evocative sound. Um, it's very autumnal and um, it has a very wide open sound. It's almost sort of Phil Spectory, you know, it's got a real wide screen feel to it. It comes in with this kind of quiet country style guitar, but it, it just goes off into this hugely atmospheric piece of production by Thomas Dolby. It's got a very kind of yearning quality to it, very melancholy vocal by um, Paddy McAloon, but it manages to be uplifting, but at the same time uh, melancholy. And I've got no idea what it's about, really strange lyrics, very kind of off the wall, surreal, you know, and that's what Paddy McAloon did so well. It's just, it's just an incredible way to start an album. That's Farron Young uh, by Prefab Sprout. Okay, now moving on to uh, some rock goliaths, and uh, couldn't leave this one out. This is uh, Night at the Opera by Queen and the amazing opening track, which is um, Death on Two Legs, dedicated to dot dot dot. This was a song that was written about Queen's then manager, who they decided was ripping them off financially. Queen at this point were three albums into their career, they'd had some chart success already and they were not making any money. And they decided, or Freddie decided, to write an absolutely coruscating uh, song about their then manager. And it's full of all these very uh, kind of, you know, hard, hard hitting, biting, quite rude uh, insults, really. And um, but it's kind of set to this very um, almost gothic, uh, extravagant um, kind of music. It comes in with this sort of, it, it fades in with this really intricate ornate piano part which sounds like it's being played in a cathedral at midnight and um, and then this guitar comes in really ominous guitar chords by Brian May and uh, it just goes into this real kind of heavy classic uh, 1975 Queen song and um, Richard McCook in his video he was talking about albums which start with pairs of songs it was the Beatles, I think. It was back in the USSR and Dear Prudence. And to me, this album has that. It's got the two. It's got the two twin pairing of Death on Two Legs and then Lazing on a Sunday Afternoon, which is this very light camp song, really short song. And it's just about you know Freddie camping it up on his bicycle and you know going to the Louvre on a Wednesday morning. And uh, when you hear those two songs back to back, uh, it's somehow it's more than the, it's more than the sum of its parts. And uh, you sort of have to hear them as a as a pair. So yeah. Brilliant stuff. Death on Two Legs and Lazing on a Sunday Afternoon by Queen. This next one gets a bad press, I think, because it's so overplayed and just people have heard it to death over and over again. But I wanted to include it because I do think it's one of the great all time opening album tracks. And it is the song Free Falling from um, Full Moon Fever by Tom Petty. Uh, which is a very kind of wide open blue sky kind of song again. It just creates vistas in the mind, you know. Um, when I first heard that, um, this song, it was the first song by Tom Petty that I'd ever heard and it just it knocked, knocked my socks off, you know, with that kind of glorious, glittering Jeff Loom production, the chiming, stacked uh, acoustic guitars and Tom's uh, upfront vocal, very, very upfront, very dry, you know, close mic'd, singing about, you know, American suburbia and about, um, it's kind of a song about a young man, you know, dreaming and and just wanting to um, get his life started, I think, you know, having this idea of this endless horizon and these kind of vistas opening up in front of him. It's a very optimistic song, and um, it's just a classic good vibe, summer's day kind of track, and it really gets this album off to a great start, and um, the rest of side one is just absolutely peerless uh, in its wake. So there we go, Tom Petty, Full Moon Fever, and the track uh, Free Falling. Okay, next we have um, Neil Young and his incredible album, Tonight's the Night. And the opening song on this album is the song, Tonight's the Night. It was one of the albums that he recorded, you know, when the band was all, uh, I don't know, they were all high on tequila and, uh, uh, and God knows what else. But it has a very kind of uh, late night vibe to it, but it's not exactly relaxed or chilled sounding. There's a kind of tension that runs through the record. Uh, slightly on edge, you know, Neil's voice is, is tremulous at the best of times, but it's just on that kind of cutting edge where you think it's going to break up entirely, and uh, it's, it's got a very wasted sound to it. 
and um, it's just a great, great opening song. And uh, again, much like Full Moon Fever, the rest of side one is pretty much peerless. Um, it's just, it's just a great, a great side of a record, and uh, and that's a brilliant opening track. Tonight's the night by Neil Young. Bit of soul now, and um, I was going to show. Um, I was going to show Songs in the Key of Life because that's got a great opening song as well but I just sh showed that uh, album quite recently in a different video I made so I thought I would go with this one. This is Too High which is the opening song on Stevie Wonder's album Inner Visions and this one it's got a very kind of loose almost psychedelic feel to it. I mean it's, it's really hard to describe how fantastic Stevie Wonder's albums are you know when he kind of hits that sweet spot playing all the instruments himself, you know, playing the drums, singing, just playing all the parts, and it all it all kind of locks together like this incredible jigsaw puzzle. And um, this album just it's just got a certain vibe to it, and that song Too High, um, it's got a kind of he's got a weird vocal effect on his voice, hasn't he? It's like a kind of phased effect on his voice that makes it sound quite trippy. And uh, it just really beckons you into the album, just into this this kind of sound world that he's creating. And um, it's just, just a song I've always loved. It just really beckons you in. Uh, and again, you know, the rest of the side, Visions, Living for the City and uh, Golden Lady, you know, all of it, absolute uh, top draw, Stevie. I'll have a quick look at the gatefold for you in the Visions. There we go. So, yeah, that's Too High by Stevie Wonder. And we'll finish with what I think is one of the greatest ever all-time album openings. And if you put a gun to my head and force me to pick the greatest opening album track ever, I would probably go for this one. And uh, it is uh, the song One of These Days by Pink Floyd, which opens their album Metal, which opens to the sound of a kind of distant howling wind effect, which gradually, uh, you gradually hear this bass notes being sounded by Roger Waters and then he starts to play this one note bass riff and it's it's just pure kind of early early 1970s psych rock and it goes into that rhythm you know that dang da 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 dang da 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 dang and then Richie Wright's Moog comes in is it a Moog or a Mellotron or something playing these weird kind of squelches of sound and then you get Nick Mason's drums, and then you get the big um, spoken word bit from Nick Mason. One of these days I'm going to cut you into little pieces. Uh, <clears throat> and then it just goes into this absolute full tilt, full on psychedelic rock epic. Um, it just, it sounds phenomenal. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the rest of side one of the record does sort of struggle to keep up with that really. It's just such a monumental opening uh, that the rest of the side kind of, it doesn't fall flat exactly, but it's, you sort of think, well, wow, they, they, they really shot their load there in the first few minutes. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, it sort of has a bit of the Doctor Who theme in the middle of it, which uh, I've always liked. It kind of breaks down into this very floaty section in the middle and you hear this theme coming in on the keyboard, which sounds a bit like Doctor Who. Just brilliant. It's one of the greatest all time album openers. I mean, you know, Pink Floyd did a, f a fair few great opening uh, album tracks. Astronomy Domain, which I know Sean has featured, that's uh, SW Studio Productions, check him out. But also I was thinking Speak To Me by uh, on um, Dark Side of the Moon, Shining You Crazy Diamond and Wish You Were Here. I mean, they they just had a way of being able to start albums. And uh, But I mean, that I think is their crowning achievement. So. There we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Ten opening album tracks and uh, check out David Newton's channel if you haven't already and I'll see you all soon. Take care folks. Bye bye.